Get up. Hi. Hey, Uncle Bro, how's life, dude? Oh, it's going good, man. After such a long time. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, happy new year and Happy New Year to you too. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I heard uh, you got some kind of uh, scholarship or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're moving to Germany, I heard. I think you heard the news, but a bit different. Actually, uh, I'm moving to Germany uh, okay. as a part of an exchange program. Okay, but then let's leave it to all that. So, you tell me, like, how's your life going on? Yeah, my life is fine, perfectly fine, but you know, COVID stuff. Oh, yeah. Man, COVID is just getting the vibe. It's just making our life miserable. So, what's your plan for Bihu this time? Uh, Bihu, it's within the family only. Okay. And uh, hoping to spend there since... Oh, yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. It seems you ordered something. Yeah, I did. Uh, nice. Actually, yeah. I ordered for my friend, but... I came, I came along. Yeah. Thanks. The food was actually for you. Ah, that's my brother. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, since about COVID, our whole work-life balance is going haywire. Yeah. And uh, I'm really getting frustrated, bro. Like, doing all the assignments and all. And uh, due to this COVID, not going, like, getting anywhere, man. So, regarding this COVID, yep. so, since you have the field. Okay. So, tell me about this Omicron. Right, Omicron is pronounced like that. Uh, or Omicron. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I don't pronounce it as Omicron. I just... So it is Omicron. Omicron. Okay. So uh, tell me something about it. Okay. This is going to news and, uh, so today it. we are discussing Omicron with chai. I think we are. Okay, let's do that. Uh, I hope you ordered some chai as well. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. So by the way, what do you want to know? So tell me about Omicron. So what is the Omicron exactly? What is the thing? Uh, see, you might be well aware of the fact that WHO actually is uh, engaged in naming the different variants. Yes. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta and all those stuff. Yeah, but why Omicron? After Delta, I think it should be something else. It should be new. Uh, not exactly after Delta. Uh, different variants from different countries like South Africa, Brazil, uh, then Peru. Okay. Those have already been uh, named. So okay, the service is quite fast. Uh, yeah. yeah. I which think I rocks. It is. Yeah, that's good. I okay. think Let him serve first, then we'll continue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect for the season. Yeah. Good. So as you went. Yeah, so... Uh, after mu, they were Thank supposed you, to name it as either new or z. But oh, we'll take it. Thank you so much. Okay. But uh, I'll my maybe people might think that new is any w. Okay. Or they might get confused with uh, the word new novel. Novel, yeah, true. And if you talk about z, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Let's not get political here. Yeah? yeah. So you can understand the whole stuff out here. Okay. And WHO has particular conventions while naming it. Okay. Uh, when we talk about omicron, uh, the symptoms which are being reported they are actually not resembling to the previous versions. Okay. Okay. People are reporting some common symptoms which are similar to that happens in common cold. Okay. You're having a runny nose. Okay. You're having a headache. Yeah. So coming to the symptoms mainly, as I've heard from all this news, yeah. so this variant doesn't show that much amount of symptoms like the previous one did. And it's a bit uh, similar to like a common cold and cold, uh, cough, like you said. So how can one differentiate here mainly? Yeah, that is a big issue actually. Yeah. So people might think that uh, I'm just having a respiratory tract infection. Hmm. Or... Just a common cold. Okay. Okay. Unless and until the person gets tested, it's really difficult to say. So you need to get the test done. Okay. So sore throat, fatigue, headache, and there are some symptoms which have been reported very recently. For example, you might wake up suddenly all drenched in sweat. Okay. Okay. That is an interesting fact. Another closely uh, followed up on symptom that is being reported very recently okay. is something called sleep paralysis. Some people are reporting that okay. they are That's finding it. Yeah, that's really interesting. They're finding it very difficult and they feel choked up. They feel as if they're unable to get up or wake up. Uh, and they feel as if something is paralyzing them. Okay, okay so coming to sleep, since uh, we're talking about these symptoms. Yeah. So we can see here that sleep, exactly. is, yeah, sure, sleep is somehow related to this COVID variant. So can we, can you just give some insight in this regard? So how can we sleep that much relatable to this COVID? See, you might yourself have experienced that your sleep pattern has changed over the last few months because of COVID, right? Yes. Some people are overdoing as far as sleep is concerned and some people are not getting sleep at all. I'm the second part. <laughs> okay. You might be busy with your assignments, oh, online yes. classes, right? <laughs> yeah, that's happening with me as well with oh. a lot of classes. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, yes. sleep does affect the immune system. Yes. And uh, when you are not getting sufficient sleep, okay. the immune system goes haywire. Yes. Sure. See, a well-balanced immune system or immune defense, okay. it features a strong innate as well as adaptive immunity. Okay. 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 I hope you can make out what is an adaptive immunity, what is innate immunity. Yes. Something that is present within your system from birth and something. Yes. Which we adapt in our time. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So in simple words, that's the thing. Okay. And to be more precise, sleep, uh, to be more precise in another way, I try to say an ideal duration of sleep, as the doctors or most of the people suggest, would be say six to eight hours eight on hours, average, yes. basically provides a good response to vaccines. Okay. Okay. And it also ensures less severe allergic reactions. So, in this regard, since yeah. you said about the allergic reactions, yeah. so, is there a study conducted that has shown that uh, this sleep deprivation has caused these allergic reactions in a much more higher manner? Yes, there are a few reports. Okay. Actually, you might be aware of the fact that some people are allergic to peanut. Yes, I've heard that impact. Right? 
uh, poor sleep actually makes it more likely okay. that they will be more susceptible to having an allergic attack. Okay. Okay. Moreover, uh, sleep is also very critical uh, when you talk about the efficacy of vaccines. Okay. okay. There are, there are, I think, a handful of studies which have shown that if a person who has received a hepatitis or H1N1 vaccine okay. and the person hasn't slept the night before, okay. I mean, night after okay. receiving the okay. vaccine, then the response to the vaccination is much weaker. Okay. okay, and this actually reduces the protection of the vaccine. So you say that uh, the efficacy of the vaccine is directly proportional to the sleep of the person. We can say that. I no, cannot no, say directly no, proportional, yeah. but it is effective. To a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are also reports that say that sleep actually helps in consolidating learning okay. and memory in the brain. Okay. Okay. So we actually don't know how that takes place, but many people believe that uh, during sleep, mm -hmm. the energy that is freed up from the immune system, uh, sorry, in, uh, freed up for the immune system. Okay that energy is used up to perform the tasks okay. as far as the co cognitive function is concerned. Okay. Okay. And sleep is a very yeah. important thing, it seems. Yeah. yeah, it does. So, in uh, sleep as well, so I have one more thing that is like uh, very much uh, associated yeah. with our life, that is the food habits that we have. And the thing is this, uh, since COVID, uh, as we all know that before, we used to do all the things, but we used to have uh, ample amount of outdoor activities as well. Yeah. But since the COVID, we are all uh, staying inside our homes all the time, and with all the activities uh, are going less and less by the day. Yeah. So, what can we do in regard to the eating habits or like the nutrition that we should require to fight this COVID mainly in this uh, time? Okay, so that's that. really a big question. <laughs> okay. I know you can answer, I'm asking for that. Uh, okay, fine, I have to answer in bits and fragments, yeah, nevertheless. Please, please, please. See, when you talk about uh, the response to COVID or its variants, okay. Multiple factors come into play. Okay. Your age could be. Okay. okay. Are you suffering from any illness, any current illness? Your uh, nutritional factors, behavioral factors. Okay. okay. To cite for an evidence, uh, let's talk about, uh, say, behavioral factors. Okay. Since you mentioned about uh, sitting inside and not going out, you're deprived of vitamin D. Vitamin yeah. D is a sunshine vitamin and it has been closely associated with some kind of protection against COVID. Okay. okay. And uh, vitamin D is also associated with calcium absorption. Then, because that. of sedentary lifestyle during these days, uh, obesity is one of the options. Okay. 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 And you might be aware of the concept of BMI, yeah. right? The indicator to suggest whether a person is an overweight person or an underweight or normal or obese or whatever. It's weight to age ratio, we can say that it's a good one. Weight to height ratio. Hydra, sorry, height ratio. Yeah. Yeah. So these factors actually play a very decisive role. Okay. okay. And I personally would suggest since you are moving to Germany, please, like, uh, please, please, like please <laughs> get engaged in some kind of physical activities. Okay. It could be either trekking, cycling, just a simple jogging, okay. or uh, swimming. You are good at swimming, I believe. <laughs> or you can hit the gym as well. Yeah. Um, make sure you have sufficient physical activity. Okay. Okay. When you talk about food, yes. that is very critical. It's a primary thing, actually. I'm talking about. Yeah, since yeah, of, yeah. Uh, eating habits is different, mainly uh, as compared to India. So yeah, before getting to that, so uh, do you think our Indian uh, diets are balanced, right? Okay, that again varies. Uh, see, every Indian state has such a wide gamut of food items placed on our dishes. The platter to be uh, tagged as balanced, yeah. it's quite difficult. Okay, ah, that is true. okay. That is true. But With okay. a big laddu coming in, a <laughs> lot, lot of stuff uh, greased up with ghee. Or like you're still a boy, come and have some more. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, that's, that's very natural that's in the Indian yeah, scenario. Okay. Right? But nevertheless, overall, we use a lot of spices, yes. a lot of herbal stuffs, True. turmeric, cloves, ginger, and all those things. I won't say that uh, the medical world will actually approve these things mm. or disapprove. But uh, to an extent, the molecular basis of the way this plant and the plant products help the immune system. Okay. I think it, it's available. Yeah, it, it's, it's available, but more research needs to be done. Okay, okay. true. We so, should know the proportions and like how, at what quantity yeah. we should use mainly. So coming back to Germany, so since uh, the diet is very different, so what can you say regarding that? What should we Personally, go for more plant products. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you are a meat guy, I know that. Uh, nevertheless, we'll take a good amount of uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, healthy fats. Okay. Don't neglect minerals and vitamins. Okay. Make sure you have sufficient amount of fruits and vegetables. But to be honest, my uh, brother, uh, since the things are going on for me, like I'm a bit of a lazy guy, so okay. I sometimes do use all those packaged foods and all. So is there any uh, problematic uh, things in this regard? Okay, I know I know I'm asking and hitting my own leg next, but come on. Personally, <laughs> personally, I would suggest avoid processed okay. foods. Especially avoid the soft drinks which are sold in yeah. Tetra Packs. Okay. They sell just truckloads of sugar. Okay. Okay. I don't want to specify the names, but you can understand, right? No, no, I understand that. Okay. Very common thing among the teenagers. Very common among every. It's a quick bite, actually. That's why people prefer that maybe sometimes because yeah. having this uh, things is quite easy than uh, carrying and like making my own juice. But yeah, to be health conscious, we have to uh, be specifying certain things. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and anything other than that? Uh, maintain a good, decent, healthy 
lifespan, but here there's a catch. Maintain a good health span. Health span. So what is a health span? Okay. I'm learning new words from you. Okay, health span, basically the period of one's life when one is healthy as well as he or she is having a good quality of life. Okay. So your lifespan may not be long, okay. but try to make your health span quite a good one. Okay. Okay. So that is the meaning of quality life as people say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So health is very important. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that is the thing happening. Particularly, the fact has been more relevant during this COVID situation. Okay. And uh, we actually don't know what's going to happen to tomorrow. Maybe the pandemic will become epidemic. Yeah, that's okay. a possibility. Yeah, geographically localized. But yes, the elderly people who are at a high risk, who are plus 50, say, okay. and those with comorbidities like diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and all those stuff. But still, more clinical data. They have, it has to come up, otherwise we cannot actually say what is the threat. I think here comes the important question mainly, that people say they need to do vaccinations and like testing mainly. So as you say that it's important to have the data, but if uh, the people doesn't uh, like accept data initially, then uh, it's a big problem. So it's a big situation here mainly. As in India we can see, like I know that many people are going nowadays, but still many majority of people are not uh, having this uh, idea or like the thing to do this uh, testing and all. So yeah. what can you say in this regard? Uh, can be done mainly because it's worrisome. See, I recently happened to conduct uh, an online uh, survey okay. with one of my colleagues uh, from Adi Sababa Science and Technology University and okay. it has been published as a preprint. And we found that, yes, uh, there is a huge vaccine hesitancy. It was done almost a year back, okay, the survey. The only thing is that uh, dissemination of proper knowledge to the mass and people should trust science. But uh, as we all know that uh, India is a very old society, okay, and yeah. we have lots of uh, like health things related to the Ayurveda and all. So making people uh, give actually the world should be transitioning, okay. Like people believe in science, but they prefer to believe more in the Desi Nuskas that was coming from generations generations now here. Yeah. So regarding that, what can be done mainly so that people uh, take it in a more sort of a open way to the scientific uh, new beings? Okay. okay. Sorry. Can the Desi Nuskas be transcoded under the umbrella of scientific purview? More research needs to be done, Absolutely. right, yes. to establish that yes, the DC Nuskas are actually good. If that is established scientifically, then fine. Okay. I think the concept now of turmeric, uh, uh, yeah. taking the positive ions like the curcumin, right, instead of curcumin. Mm -hmm. So now this, I think the implementation is going on, but we have still lips and bounds to go mainly, right? Yeah, there are a lot of things to be done. Ayurveda is a science, they say, and yeah. uh, a lot of things need to be uh, dealt into from a total different perspective, from the perspective of modern science. Okay, okay. even though it is there for ages. Uh, I myself did a certification course in Ayurveda and Nutrition. Really? Okay. Wow. So I understood that yes, it is a science. Okay. But more molecular basis needs to be proved. Okay, now it's only the fundamental basis, mean like mixing up certain things and like you can make the thing. But that's why it's science. But to get into more molecular basis, more research has to be done. Exactly, actually. exactly. Yeah. Right. That that's what I want to present in a layman's language. Uh, means you need to establish the efficacy through proper scientific documentation, experimentation. Okay. So okay. coming to efficacy. The thing is this, uh, like as we've seen this uh, viruses are constantly mutating, right? Yep. And uh, people are having concerns now that since the vaccine they took, how much is the efficacy of the vaccine to this new virus as yes, compared to other viruses? Okay, you had used the word constantly mutating. Yes. yes, the time frame for mutation may change from virus to virus. Okay. And mutations are closely associated with evolution. Yes, okay. true. So new variants are coming up. We had, I had co-vaccine. You might have Covishield. No, no, I do have Covaxin. Okay, fine. So, fine. So it was against SARS-CoV-2 virus, right? Now the variations or the mutations uh, that have sprung up, the vaccines will be efficient, surely to an extent, but okay. the activity won't be completely nullified. Okay. They will be efficient to an extent. Yeah. So I would personally suggest those who haven't been vaccinated yet, please go and get the jab. Yeah. Okay, that's very critical. You are already aware of the fact that a lot of people are just not going to the centers. Vaccine hesitancy, lots and lots of vaccines are being wasted as such. Sure. There are a lot of vaccine politics globally. Nevertheless, I personally believe, uh, yes, things will turn to the brighter side. Yeah. yeah. And since you are moving to Germany, <laughs> a lot of people are actually into drinking. Uh, yeah, that is true. That's the thing. Actually, part of the culture mainly. Yeah. Cannot that. Yeah. Uh, I think you've heard about Oktoberfest mainly. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Forward, so, but let's see. I know that. I know that. Because of that only I specified that. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> okay. But okay. make sure don't go for binge drinking. Uh -huh. That is true. Okay. Okay. And try to cut down C's if you happen to smoke. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't. Okay, that's good. So try to have a healthy lifespan. A good health span. Yeah. So this is the place, guys. Do check out. Yes. And you'll have a lo lovely time sitting here with great teas, coffees, and like mainly chai. I don't say about coffees, but have tea here. Okay. Thank you. Bye <laughs> thank bye. You. Bye bye.